So today we're going to talk about the skin for ANP, ANCC um, nurse practitioner review. Um, skin is something that is definitely a love-hate relationship. Some people really love it. Some people don't like skin. Um, I don't care. <laughs> but skin is something that um, obviously we will be tested on. So I just made this quick little slide of all the stuff for skin. Obviously, it's not all inclusive because there's some um, disease processes that are not here, but this is just solely skin and um, fair medications. So Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, um, as the picture depicts here, it is through a tick bite, and that is usually an occurrence when someone goes hiking or um, is on a trail. That's what you usually see um, people in like the north, uh, northwestern or um, central regions of the U.S. Um, if you've got lots of grass, if you um, see a question with people, with someone hiking or something like that or a tick, the proper way to remove a tick is to grasp um, it close to the skin and then apply pressure and then just take it off. You're going to see this rash pop up on the patient and with Rocky Mountain Spotty Fever everyone gets doxy. Pregnant women, um, children, the, the benefits outweigh the risk. So um, doxycycline is your go-to. So urethema migrans, that's also known as Lyme's disease, also with a tick bite, um, also being treated with doxycycline. Um, if patients have allergies, there's amoxicillin um, and sufflumirid also. Um, that will help with that um, if there are allergies. Next, we have the brown recluse, recluse spider bite, um, and that that can get really nasty if patients don't really catch it. They can actually become necrotic, and um, can have like the skin can slough off, and you can see debris. Um, it can get really, it can loosen up the skin and just make it look really really um, bad but when you catch it you definitely want to give them NSAIDs for pain and then some oral antibiotics obviously if it gets infected and stuff like that. Next we see varicella and zoster. I kind of put them together because they're the same sort of disease processy varicella. Um, chicken pox you see that in Young children, you can see it in adults, but you get chicken pox, and um, that's if the if if the patient has not gotten the varicella vaccine, um, and a lot of times it's itching. Um, you want to give them some NSAIDs just for the pain if they have pain or fever, um, and children can return back to daycares or school when the lesions have crusted over. Um, Medication, you can give them acyclovir or antivirals, valsaclovir. Valsaclovir, um, you can't give them that uh, if it gets bad enough, but um, best way to do that is to prevent um, them from even getting it. Live vaccines you can give starting at 12 months. So, um, and the shingles vaccine, you can start giving it at 50, the shing grits, start giving that at 50. Um, to older adults that have had um, chicken pox um, and you can always get the chicken pox vaccine as well. One thing that you've got to watch out for is the um, herpes zoster chicken um, varicella near your eye that can cause permanent blindness so that's an emergency if you see an outbreak near the face or near the eye. Now we're going to get more into our skin cancers. Um, actinic keratosis, that's a precancer 
precancerous skin infection to um, squamous cell carcinoma. And this is usually the presentation, usually in older adults. Um, things that you can do are the 5-FU cream. Um, you can refer them to Durham for a biopsy. You can also do cryotherapy, laser. Depending on the patient demographic, what they want to do is what you're going to um, gear that towards that patient. Basal cell carcinoma. So basal cell carcinoma is actually the most common um, skin cancer. And you're going to see that waxy, pearly dome, um, dome shape um, lesion on their skin. And um, you'll see that telangium, uh, telang telangiostasis. Yeah. So that's basically like the veinous, that veiny area. You see the small little veins right there. You're going to see that. You may or may not see that. Like in this, you don't, in some areas you see it and some you don't. But that's an immediate referral for a biopsy. You could biopsy it if you were or are trained in that. But um, that's a referral to derm. Um, if you see that. Let's talk about malignant melanoma. And I have here A, B, C, D, E um, guidelines. So malignant is like um, the worst type of melanoma um, skin cancer that um, you, you can see. Um, so A, A, B, C, D, E guidelines help you um, determine if a patient has melanoma. Um, a is for asymmetry, so it's not really symmetrical here. Like if you have like a mole or something like that, it's quite symmetrical. You have a perfectly round circle. Borders are irregular. Um, it's not really, there's no real pattern to it. You're just, you know, it's abnormal looking. Um, color, you get to see the darker color. Um, on darker skin patients, you can see um, black or um, purplish, well not too purple, but um, just the black, it just looks um, like it does not belong, like you see this on the skin right here, or in the nail bed. Um, D is for diameter, and that's going to be less than 6, that's pencil eraser for reference. And E is evolving or elevating. Um, you want to refer that immediately to derm um, for biopsy and excision. And this right here is um, really seen in people of color, African Americans, or people that are really um, you know, foreigners or stuff like that. Um, and if you see that on their nail bed, and if it's changing, um, definitely want to look into that because it could be malignant melanoma. And it's called um, acural lentigerous melanoma. So we're talking about psoriasis, also known as plaque psoriasis. Um, with psoriasis, you're going to see that um, Auschwitz sign, and that's a pinpoint, pinpoint bleeding in area once the um, scar has healed or psoriasis has sort of healed. You're going to see like some just pinpoint, very sensitive, very touchy, and then um, Kobner's phenomenon. and that's a scar formation. It could be near it, and it's super touchy as well. So really um, look out for for those. And they can be limiting. It can be um, a way that can help you diagnose this. Um, it, it can help you diagnose as well. So if you see a lesion, you're not really quite sure. You know, if it's not giving you the typical presentation of plaque psoriasis, then um, 
if you can look at the, if you see, if you touch it, it's got the pinpoint um, hemorrhages and then um, the scarring close to that certain lesion. I mean, you can put that in your differentials as well. Um, medications that you want to use for plaque psoriasis is going to be your topical steroids. Tinea versicolor, um, honestly, I've never seen tinea versicolor, um, but it's a, a bacterial infection that can happen from um, exposure to the sun, um, skin tanning, or uh, just people that are outside in the sun all the time, lifeguards. Um, I did have a question about a lifeguard with that, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, but um, you're going to want to do oral antifungal or um, your topical antifungal for that as well. Atopic dermatitis, also known as eczema, um, very common in the folds of the skin, so like the back of your knee, uh, between your elbows. You see that a lot with young children. And I have here, what are the triple A's here? Um, atopic dermatitis can present with asthma as well as allergies, so that's the triple A's. Um, atopic dermatitis, asthma, allergies. Lots of things that you can do for that. Um, obviously, you want to lubricate that area. You want to use skin emollients and stuff. Um, hydration, bath. You don't want to do too hot of a bath. You maybe like a lukewarm bath. You don't want to irritate the skin too much. You don't have to um, expose that area every single day, but you do want to do... Um, um, that heavy duty um, lotions with um, emollients. You want to be able to, you have to like scoop out the lotion. Um, you don't want to like use the um, really thin lotions. And for something more mild or uh, much more aggressive, you might want to use steroids and stuff like that. Obviously, if you've got things that irritate the skin, you want to get that child or that person. Um, away from that. Urosyphilis. Urosyphilis is um, facial um, cellulitis, cellulitis of the face. Um, definitely um, one thing that I also have never actually seen in clinic, but um, urosyphilis has that sharply demarcated lines and um, just like that things that you want to do Calflex um, is very good for that and that could actually be on the face or on the legs as well cellulitis acute cellulitis we have all as nurses um, been in contact or seen a patient with dermatitis. Now, um, obviously, um, it, not in the hospital, but if it gets to a point where you're not able to, usually we see patients in clinic with dermatitis that come out of the hospital or, you know, they're kind of been out of the hospital or in that middle area. Um, it just depends. Depends when you see it, but you're going to do for non perilent going to do that doxycycline, um, clindamycin, perlulant, you're going to do the BCD, um, Bactrim, clindamycin, and doxycycline, and that's when you're dealing with the MRSA, uh, MRSA. Fur uncles, also known as um, folliculitis, um, they're just painful abscesses. Um, it could be seen in the hair. Um, lots of people get it. Like um, sometimes you see people get it in their private areas or um, hair lines or, or different areas like that. Um, what you want to do is I and D. Um, get your doctor pimple popper on. Oh my gosh, that's. I mean, it's so satisfying to get the juices out. That, that's all I'm going to say. I know some people don't like that, but it's just very satisfying to, you know, numb the area, clean it off. And then, you know, either you're squeezing it or you're getting your needle. It's just, 
Oh, I love, yes. Okay, I'm done. But <laughs> uh, ways that you can do that, um, what treatment for that is you want to get it warm, um, IND it, and then um, give that Bactroban or Doxy or um, clindamycin just to, um, if you see that it looks infected, but just to avoid that infectious process as well. Definitely, definitely very fun to to do once in clinic. Okay, so Herbidinus suprativa. This is something that um, can be seen in the armpit, private area, um, peritoneal area. This is genetic, and a lot of patients that present with this, the patient that present with this are usually smokers or patients that are obese. Um, and sometimes you can get it out with warm compresses and um, just keeping that area or being on top of it. But a lot of times um, patients are not able to and it can get infected because it's in those hot spots. Um, so you're going to be giving them some antibiotics and um, making sure that they just keep an eye on it so they won't have further infections. Non bolus infantigo. Um, definitely see that a lot with younger children. Um, and once you see that, you might as well treat the entire household um, because, especially if there's a lot of children, um, take them out of school because um, it's very infectious. Um, you see that honey crested lesion. Um, the honey crested lesion is like not only in that. Uh, chin area but it can be in the mouth it can be in the nose it can be all around the face um, on the hand as well um, wherever the, the child is touching um, um, that um, lesion can appear so medication that you want to prescribe for that is that mupircin ointment and you're going to do that for about 10 days pityriasis rosacea Pityriasis rosacea is uh, also known as the Herald patch right there. It starts with like a little Herald patch and then the Christmas tree rash can appear um, afterwards. This is self-limiting and it should go away. Oh gosh, scapies. Scapies, it's a, 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 a bug bite. It's a, those nits. Oh gosh, they are the absolute worst and um, they get into the, your hands into your little um, in between the hands and between the toes they can get everywhere um, there's intense itching um, intense intense itching pure it can get people I've seen it an outbreak in a nursing home um, actually as a nursing student and it was it was terrible I absolutely despise every nurse hates bugs that's, that's they hate bugs and those are like the worst and you see it everywhere absolutely everywhere in the small little tiny areas uh, Pinephrine cream will help wash the entire like you're gonna wash the patient and you are going to put that Pinephrine cream everywhere and then they're gonna keep it on for eight to 12 hours. You're probably gonna to have to do it again. You're gonna, then once they keep it on for eight to 12 hours, wash it off, hold off for a bit, and then do it again. Um, you're gonna treat everyone in the house. We had to treat everyone on that nursing home floor. And imagine giving like 60 baths in a day. It was, yeah, it was a day, but you want to take all their clothes, you want to wash it in super hot water, um, everything that they have been in contact with that you can, you want to clean it off, put it in a bag, throw stuff that don't, does not need to be in the area, throw that away. Um, you really, really, really want to get rid of them because if you do not get rid of them, you will be back doing the same thing. Okay, that's enough with scapies. Now the tinea infections, so tinea capitis, pedius, corpus, curtis, 
barbarous, all of that ringworm. And you present with that annular, the annular, what is it called? You're presented with the um, annular lesions. So it's like that circle with central clearing, central clearing. Once you see that on a test question, think ringworm. So tinea capitis, you've got the head, cap, piteous, foot. In um, Spanish, it's pie, um, or French is pie. So I think pie, foot. Um, corpus, I think of like a, a, a corpus or corp, corpse, which is a body, Curtis, is like the um, private area. So the jock itch. Um, Menium, hands, met, hands, um, barbarous, so barbara, beard, um, and you're going to be treating those patients with antifungals, usually antifungals, um, and then making sure you're clearing the area. So it's, uh, you see that in people or children that share um, hats or share things around the house, um, making sure you're cleaning it. Every person has their own um, items. You know, we also see that with wrestlers, cleaning off the mats, making sure you're wiping it off, letting it air dry, um, all of that, not sharing things, you know, stuff in lockers, making sure that's being cleared and cleaned. So acne. Acne is something that um, it's usually seen a lot of time in the young adults. However, um, you can see acne through a vast array of um, time. Um, also, adult acne is definitely a thing that no one really talks about. Um, not that I've seen. But nevertheless, what you want to start with is, um, I'm assuming everyone is familiar with acne because um, we see it and we hear it on TV all the time. So you want to wash the face, make sure the patient is washing their face twice a day. Um, if they're not washing their face, let's start with that. Once you see that uh, they come back, they're like, yeah, I'm washing my face. Or they're like, yeah, I wash my face every day. Um, so then you want to get them on that benzoyl peroxide salicylic acid um, wash. So once you get that benzoyl peroxide, if that's not working, then you want to start on that um, <clears throat> the retin-A, excuse me, um, the re urethromycin cream. So if that antibiotic cream is not really working, you can try oral antibiotic. Um, if oral antibiotics are not working, we can try birth control. Combination birth control with estrogen really, really helps clear up acne. Some, some people just take that just for that aspect. Um, but if that is not working, then we want to refer them to derm because, um, derm will usually assess them and then put them on Accutane or other different, uh, medications that they can give and then they can monitor them. Um, obviously with Accutane, you want to make sure that the, the patient is on at least two forms of birth control or uh, they're on birth control because it could be very detrimental to baby, especially in that, um, first couple of trimesters when baby's being developed. Never, ever, ever. That is a category X drug um, for patients, for um, pregnant women. Rosacea. Rosacea is a condition, genetic um, usually, and it can be triggered by foods, um, sunlight, alcohol, um, and you really want to um, catch that before it gets too bad because it could be really, really painful for um, patients with rosacea. You really see that in your light-skinned individuals, um, lots of um, fair skin, um, Asian, European um, medications that you want to prescribe for that. Is that Metro gel? Um, sometimes cetracycline. Um, but usually uh, it can be referred to um, dermatology because um, it can get quite complex as well.
And last but not least is anthrax. Anthrax was um, or is a skin condition or it's a biological it's a biological um, that can be um, put on someone the anthrax spray, um, scare of the post 9-11 time um, can be given to uh, be, it, it was in the mail and um, a lot of the post men and women were uh, having to um, having to have prophylactic um, measures but one of the um, questions that I see in the nurse practitioner testing is um, cattle farmer or delivery person that has been in contact with cattle or um, that type of um, scenario and then you see that black painless um, lesion either on the arm or the leg um, and it just appears but medication wise you want to give them that doxycycline or excuse me the ciprofloxin um, you can't give them doxy um, but it's going to be um, for seven and ten days twice a day um, if you guys have any questions about any of this please um, let me know I will do my best to look it up and um, and send it to you guys. I hope this helps someone. I just need to talk it out sometimes. And um, this is the best way to do it. Have a great day. Good luck.